considering how badly the Pixel 2 performed last year. And I mean really, really badly, there is a lot of excitement for Google's upcoming Pixel 3. For good reason, because whilst it does seem like Google wasn't the best at selling their devices, they definitely knew how to make them. This photo was taken by a senior member of the XDA team, and while you do have to treat this kind of stuff with some scepticism, it all fits in quite nicely with what the Pixel 3 should be. And if this is Google's Pixel 3, then we've got a lot to look forward to. So let's get started. You might have noticed this snazzy logo on the back of the device, and clearly that's not a Google logo, but we've got reason to believe that this is a code Google uses for its prototype phones. What you're looking at now is an official image Google shared, showing the prototypes they went through until their final Pixel 2. And nothing looks particularly out of the ordinary until you zoom all the way in. This logo is almost identical. You could say too close to be a coincidence. So this has either been meticulously constructed as part of an elaborate hoax, which mind you has been done before, or this is the real deal. So not only does this logo fit into the picture quite nicely, but the design itself that we're seeing on this phone is very plausible, sticking to the design identity that Google has already established whilst modernizing for the rise of wireless charging. Because yes, this phone has a completely glass back, which would allow this to occur. Whilst on first glance, it does look very similar to the Google Pixel 2 design, which was part glass and also part aluminium. If you inspect it closer, you'll notice this phone has the more seamless option of glass followed by frosted glass. To then add some credibility to this, the design we have seen so far has been reinforced with this case leak, brought up by Phone Arena and then reposted by Ice Universe on Twitter. You can see the substantial chin at the bottom, notch at the top, and what also looks like a dual speaker setup. Personally, I don't think this is the slickest looking device. In fact, looking through Google's history, they've never really had the nicest looking phones. But they're trying to do quite a lot here with these dual speakers and what looks like dual front facing cameras. So the front of the phone can't really be all display. And you might be thinking, why on earth would Google have two front facing cameras? Given the company's history of being able to create great portrait mode with a single lens, it's a fair question to which I'd probably say it is not primarily there for photos, but some sort of 3D facial recognition targeted squarely at Apple's 2018 iPhone X successor. We've got the apparent specifications too, with the base model seemingly coming with the Snapdragon 845 and four gigabytes of RAM, which is, no surprises there, bang on what we expected. And there might also be an option for a six gigabyte RAM version just to target that upper end of the market. But more recently, and something that has been making a fair bit of noise in tech media is the single rear camera on the back. The recent hype around dual and even triple cameras might make this news a disappointment for some. But if anything, having a single camera on Google's Pixel 3 would get me more excited. Let me explain. The Pixel 3's camera is going to be at least as good as Google's Pixel 2's, most probably better. Now because even in mid 2018, last year's Pixel 2 is still one of the best cameras to date, that means that if the Pixel 3 beats this, Google will probably have made the best camera available on a phone, once again. And if they can do this using only a single camera lens, then it's indicative. It's indicative that their software is powerful enough to be able to keep up with the very weighty hardware of its competitors, like Huawei. And this is just generally good news for the phone market. When you get to the stage where software can substitute for hardware, things get cheaper. Bear in mind that if they do stick to a single rear camera, you're probably gonna lose out on optical zoom, but that's a sacrifice that personally I'm pretty okay with. Something new since the Pixel 2 is Google's acquisition of the HTC smartphone team. The Pixel 3 will be the first smartphone to be produced from the marriage, and the benefits from this move are twofold. A more refined design and more production bandwidth, so more units produced. This lines up quite nicely with what Rick Osterlo, who is high up in the Google hardware team, said last year. His words were, we don't want it to be a niche thing. So the Pixel 3 phones, while still exclusively high-end, 
are going to be Google's best shot yet at Apple and Samsung flagships. As with last year, it's looking like we're going to get the two main models, the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL, with the XL likely to be more or less identical but with a larger display and larger battery maybe also higher resolution and more RAM. There is also speculation that a third device exists, as three code names were discovered regarding Google's 2018 lineup, namely Crosshatch, Albacore, and Blueline. And if this does turn out to be true, I would speculate that this third phone would be targeted squarely at the upper mid-range market, because with such powerful software, Google wouldn't need the absolute best hardware to make a fantastic end product, so they might be able to make a cheaper phone. They could very plausibly create a OnePlus 6 or 6T rival, and given the immense sales of the 6 so far, demand is clearly strong in the segment. Okay, wrapping this up, that is most of the speculation regarding the device itself, but we've also got the release date. According to Bloomberg, we're looking at October 2018 which would be no surprise to anyone, considering that's exactly one year after last year's event. This release date would also give the company a bit of a one-up on Apple, who traditionally announced their phones in September. A bit of a chance to steal the limelight to catch everyone's attention after the dust has settled on the new iPhones. So it's all pretty exciting stuff. Bear in mind we are still in a speculative stage, but most of the things we have seen so far do add up to a coherent and legitimate looking final image. I really hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.